Hey, so we're going to take a look at how to make a really high quality pinch pot. Um, so this is a pretty basic hand building technique and all we need is of course some clay. This clay is wedged already. Um, it's a white stoneware. We need a sponge, a bit of water, and I like to have my trusty surgical towel. Okay. So to get started here, we have to first identify what form are we actually going to be making. What I mean by that is thinking about what our intention is for the piece that we're going to make. So for example, um, I could be making a half sphere form, like a bowl. Uh, otherwise, I could consider making a cylinder. Um, I could make something a bit different, like a geometric form, or something completely different than any of these, more organic or something. But I need to first decide what it is that my goal is with this clay. So um, just to get things started, I'm going to be focusing on making a half sphere form. With the half sphere pinched form in mind, I'm going to take a look at my clay and I want to make my clay resemble that form to start with. Now, um, I've been wedging clay so my hands are like dry right now. What I like to do is dip my fingertips in water, spread the water onto my hands, just like a thin layer of moisture um, so that I can create a barrier uh, plus it feels good on my hands, but I'm going to create a barrier so that I am drawing less moisture out of the clay as I'm working with it. So as I'm going to be making a spherical form, the first thing that I'm going to do is make my clay roughly spherical. So I'm using an open palm to hit the clay. So I'm removing as little moisture as possible. It doesn't have to be a perfect sphere or anything like that. I'll I'll work on uh, refining the form as I pinch, as well as um, with processes to uh, refine the surface later after the form is pinched. But one thing that I do want to take care of before I start pinching is creases and wrinkles and things like that, because they're only going to cause um, cracks and other kinds of misadventures as I'm actually pinching. So I am just using my thumb to erase these marks. Notice um, I did add a little bit of moisture to my hands, but one thing that you will not very frequently see happen with me is my hands are not dripping wet. Additionally, the clay is not slimy, it's not covered in water. Um, I'm just using the clay to erase those additional marks. So if you look and see what I did, um, it's not, again, a perfect sphere or anything like that, but major creases and shadows and cracks I removed, okay? So I could spend a little bit more time hitting it into a ball, but it's really not necessary. This is ready to go to start pinching my spherical form. I am very frequently adding moisture, a layer of moisture to my hands, and now I'm ready to start pinching. So I am right-handed, um, and that means that I am going to be holding the clay primarily in my left hand so that my right hand can do the majority of the pinching. The pinching process, of course, is just putting your thumb to your fingertips. Um, now, being that this is going to be a spherical form, I am going to use the benefit of the shape of my hand that's holding the clay to keep the bottom of the piece round. If I'm working on it on the table, the bottom of the piece is going to get flat. Um, now, I can use the table for certain parts of pinching, but it's important to keep putting it back into my hand to keep the bottom of it round. Okay, so to start pinching, very simply, I'm going to take the thumb on my dominant hand, push it into the clay, and being that I do want to have a closed bottom, as if this were a bowl or something like that, I'm not going to pinch all the way through. 
Um, I've really stuck my thumb in about maybe this far. So there is a healthy distance all the way to the bottom of the piece. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to curl my fingertips around so that my fingertips are going to be meeting my thumb um, at the bottom of the piece. And what I'm going to do is just press together. Please note, I am not squeezing and pinching using my entire hand, no, no, no. Instead, I'm just pinching with my fingertips and my thumb. So I'm focusing my pinch just down at the bottom of the piece. I'm only going up maybe about this far around the entire piece. So I'm pinching, rotate, pinch, rotate. This is a very gradual process. If I pinch the clay too hard to achieve the desired thickness right away, as opposed to doing it gradually, you'll see I'm going around and around multiple times, not just one time around. And again, I'm only pinching from the bottom about maybe this high, that's it. If you pinch too severely to achieve your desired thickness of the clay wall, um, you run the risk of cracking your clay and it would be nice to avoid things like that so we have less cleanup and refining once the form is pinched. Okay, so what I'm actually doing here, and it's difficult to demonstrate a pinch process, whether on a video or in real life, because I can show you what I've done, but you can't see it. This looks like I've done nothing. You can see how really thick the wall is. Also, you can't see through the clay, so you have no idea how thin this is. Only I know, because I am touching it. And what I'm using here is a, a sense of awareness that is referred to as tactile judgment. It is my ability to determine how far my fingertips are from my thumb without actually being able to see them. So um, this is something that you'll be developing as you practice the pinch technique and and in general, just working with ceramic clay. So for me, I know that I have achieved a consistent thickness all the way around the piece from the bottom about up to this line around the entire piece. And um, I'm looking for a nice consistent thickness and I really like to work pretty thin with my clay work. So for me, my target is to be no thicker than my pinky. So this thickness here. And for me, a lot of times in, in my work, I'm actually going to roughly eh, two thirds or half the thickness of my pinky. But you'll see that as I progress. So now that I have achieved roughly that thickness down here, I'm going to move up to the next layer and I'm going to pinch in this area all the way around the piece. So I'm moving my hands up. Notice that I am just working with my fingertips and I'm going to start to pinch. Now, um, the other thing that I am attending to while I am doing this is I'm thinking about that form, that intended form of a half sphere. So I, I need to stop and actually check the form every now and then. So for me, I'm going to first get my initial thickness pinched out. And the funny thing is too, I actually find it very useful to not look at what I'm doing. So as I'm talking to you and I'm pinching, I'm actually not looking at what I'm doing. I find it more useful to just feel it. In a lot of cases, I actually close my eyes. Um, this is, can be a really meditative practice and uh, it's a good way to get used to being present with the material. Okay, so maybe you can start to see where I've been working. You can see this ridge right here. So this time around, I pinched from here to here. So from here all the way down now is a pretty consistent thickness of clay wall. Before I go any further, I need to kind of check my form and I'm looking at it in the profile view right here and rotating it and pushing the clay in or out, depending on what it needs to be a little bit closer to a half sphere.
Okay, so now I'm going to start pinching in this area between here and here. Same story. Now my hands are getting a little bit dry, so I will add a little bit of moisture and then continue the pinching process. I know some people um, who have experienced pinching may find this description to be a little overkill, um, but I have found that this process, practicing this process can be very, very useful when you are attempting to make a very specific form, which in a lot of cases, artists are. They have an intention for the clay that they have in their hands. And it can be really frustrating when you have something specific you wanna make and it just won't come out. So using a technique like this can really be very helpful for achieving the specific form that you're looking for. And again, it's, it's difficult to demonstrate, especially in a video, because you can't feel what I feel. If I were with a group of students right now, I could pass the pinch pot around, and that's typically when their eyes light up and they understand because they can feel it. So this is really a very personal experience. And as I start getting closer to the top of the piece, and again, I'm only pinching from here to here right now, that's all I'm doing all the way around the piece. Um, as I get closer to the top, you'll be able to start seeing the thickness or thinness of my walls. So now what I'm doing is I'm looking at my profile once again, trying to make this closer to a half sphere. So I've got finger pinch marks and things like that, but you can see largely there's not a lot of cracks. There's not a lot of major dents or anything like that. So there's going to be just minimal stuff that I have to refine once I get my form pinched. So if you look at it from this side, again, it looks like massively uneven and very thick, but truthfully, this thickness right here, it is only that thick about down to here. Then once you get to here, all the way down to the bottom, it is less than, thick, less than the thickness of my pinky. You have to trust me on this. Okay, so I'm gonna keep on pinching. So now from here to here, you'll notice my sections are getting a little bit smaller. Um, because I am controlling my form a bit more. The other thing that I need to consider is, again, what does a half sphere look like? So if I'm making a circle um, <laughs> with my fingers here, if you look at this hand right here, you can see, and it's just a, a rough circle, I'm gonna need to go wider than this in this area. So I'm gonna actually start to um, stretch these walls out a bit as I, as I continue. This water process can help so much in preventing cracks, especially around the lip, because those can get to be very problematic as you were pinching. Okay, so I'm pinching up in this section now, and I am working to stretch the clay, which will naturally cause the wall to thin. If you find your form is getting out of control or the clay is cracking a lot, you are probably pinching too fast, meaning you are pinching really hard, trying to extend and stretch the clay um, in like one or two pinches as opposed to five to 10 pinches. So I know that that can be very time consuming, but just allow yourself to be absorbed by handling this material and really feeling it and being present. Um, not only will that help you to achieve your intended uh, form and level of quality with your piece, 
but it's also really a very relaxing experience and can be quite meditative. Okay, so um, I have, you can see that it's starting to get thinner and it's more evident. It's not as dark in there. Um, so I really only have like this last edge up here, which is going to become the lip or rim of my piece. But before I do that, I, again, I'm going to kind of correct the overall form that I have by widening it a bit more. And it's important to keep attending to this form. Don't leave it until the end because you're going to find you don't have enough clay to make the form that you're looking for. So I am using um, the longer portion of my finger to just determine that everything is roughly equal and to make a consistent um, curve in the form. Okay, so now all I have left is this last portion. Um, another thing to take note of is the shape of my hand as I'm pinching against uh, the, the pinched form. If my hand is straight up and down, it's going to encourage the, the wall to be more vertical. If my hand is more curved, it's going to encourage the wall to curve. So consider that when you are making whatever your intended form is. So now I'm gonna work just up here on the lip. And this is where a lot of my flare is going to come from for my half sphere. And I need to be really attentive. See these cracks that are starting to happen? Um, I do have another video that shows you how to uh, take care of those cracks, but for right now, just try to ignore them because they're not your primary focus. Your primary focus is um, the thickness of the wall and attention to the form. So, um, you can see it's getting significantly wider just on one part. It's not, it's getting a little bit closer to a half sphere, like in this area, but you can see it's ovular. You can also see here how thick my wall actually is in relation to my pinky. This is going to make a nice lightweight, lightweight object as instead of it being like clunky and heavy, like a big old paperweight, um, it can be quite elegant. So it's helpful that you can see this pinching was achieved from this thickness. And I did it rather quickly, hence why we're getting some cracks there. Uh, additionally, this particular clay body that I'm using is more prone to cracking um, just because it doesn't have a lot of plasticity. Uh, so you may or may not experience significant, significant cracking if you do, don't worry, we'll, we'll deal with it. If you don't, awesome for you, um, but you'll probably need to address the lip at some point anyway. The other thing that I would like to draw your attention to before I finish on this side is notice how the lip is generally fairly level. There is a little bit of an undulation. I haven't really pinched over here, but for the most part, my lip is fairly level. I will correct that and make it very level later when I address all those cracks. But because of the technique that I'm using in my pinching, how I'm pinching gradually, I'm pinching in around, um, around the entire form, what I'm doing is I'm gradually increasing the height of the wall at the same time around the entire object. That is really circumnavigating the common issue of having an unlevel lip or edge on your pinched forms. And so by taking these gradual steps, it's actually allowing you to use less time and effort in the final refinement of the pinched form. So believe it or not, but going slow is actually going to save you time and end up making your pinched forms not only more intentional and higher levels of quality, um, but it's also going to save you a ton of time on the back end for when you need to do the refining of your forms. So as you can see, 
my walls are fairly consistent in thickness. Um, they do undulate a bit in height. I'm not worried about that right now. I'll take care of that in a little bit. So I know though, I do have to work on adjusting the outward profile of my form. Um, if I take something that is actually circular and I put my object against it to compare the profile, I can see that I do need to, to come out further. And so I will continue to work on adjusting the profile of my form. And I'm moving up and down, uh, finding thicker areas that I can pinch and manipulate so that I can have the outward form that I desire. Now, um, I will have to store that this piece. Um, you may get this far in one session, um, but you are probably going to need to store it before you start addressing the lip or anything like that. If I set it down on its foot, it is going to flatten the, the roundness of the foot, and that is not what I want because I wanted a half spherical form, so I wanted a round foot. So I can't set it down on the bottom of the piece. And notice I did all my pinching in the palm of my hand to keep it nice and round. So instead, what I can do is actually set it on the lip. I know the lip is uneven, but it's not a big deal right now. Um, and I know some artists like tap their pieces down to try to level the lip that way. And you can do that, but the problem is it's going to change the thickness of the clay and therefore not keep it as consistent all the way through. So once again, in my next video, I'm going to be showing you how to level the lip and address these cracks, as well as taking a look at if you have any unwanted marks, things like that, on the outside of your form. I hope that you give this a try and you try to make some intentional pinched forms.